Welcome to the Explore Composites Materials Library. This is laminate sample 43B. This one is exactly the same set of materials as 43A. This PET foam with a stitched chop strand mat. But here we're going to infuse it and then we're going to break some stuff and compare them. And here's a look at that grit curtain green 80 core. This is the same material as in the previous sample. This is a recycled PET foam and it has similar mechanical properties, you know, a bit less in terms of shear and compression than some similar weight foams. It is less expensive in general and recycled. For a lot of projects, it's pretty ideal. This is a contour scrim foam. It's sliced into little blocks about 30 millimeters square, and those blocks allow it to conform very nicely, but those cuts in the foam also fill up with resin, quite a lot of resin. Here's a look at the finished sample. Just a look ahead in the video. A lot of resin in there, and you can see in the laminate schedule here how much resin the core takes up. And again, comparing it back to number 43A, the vacuum bag versus the infused, you can see just how much resin it takes to fill all those kerfs. So now to build the actual panel. This one is gonna be infused. I've weighed out the material beforehand to get a rough idea how much resin I think it'll take. Here's a look at that vector ply. EM0015, the stitched chop strand mat. This is completely epoxy compatible because there's no binder. And here's that core. You can see just how conformable it is, especially when bent with the kerfs on the outside of any curvature. Also, just how much resin it takes to fill those kerfs up. This is why putty is so nice. And in the other direction, the limitations of closing up those kerfs. So I've got that down here, fit in the glass doubled it up on one side, and put a little slip right in the edge, putting some peel ply around the edges. And in the middle, this um, AirTech Flow Lease 160, which is a combination peel ply, release film, and flow media. Here is the feed line setup. It has a vacuum infusion connector that's 3D printed. The alternative here, the T-fitting that gets fit into the spiral wrap. This is using a product um, that I have some samples of, I'll get into on a future video, um, which will come back to haunt me a little bit when this starts to flow. Bagging it up here, all pretty typical. Pleats as symmetrical as possible. Pulling this bag down, giving it a vacuum test, letting it sit for 10 or 15 minutes and now mixing some resin. This is a ProSet infusion epoxy, pretty fast. The table surface is about 30 C, so relatively warm. And my hope is that this will flow nicely given I'm working in a pretty cold environment here. Now, as I start this, I'm noticing that it's not filling the spiral wrap the way that I hoped. And you can look in here and see this, this bit I used is a special spiral wrap wrapped in a flow media. And it turns out I mistook the feed side for the resin side uh, because I wasn't paying attention. And so I have something that is meant to block resin flow uh, into that spiral wrap as it forms a vacuum perimeter and I'm trying to use it as a flow feed feature and it's just not letting the resin through. Um, that product is a spiral wrap wrapped in peel ply um, and a perforated film to limit how much resin gets in when it's used on the other side of the infusion. So I'm having to lift that little black connector up and bridge the bag a bit and let resin flow out around and that's not awesome. So as this fills more than halfway, you can see a little grid of resin popping up from the bottom. And what's happened here is the resin has flowed underneath through those big gaps in the core. And it has come around the bottom and blocked the air from escaping. And typically you'd see this on the bottom side of a part if you're using surface flow. And here you can see there's some little islands that never got filled. So now I've come back the next day after this has sit for a bit. And I'm going to demold it, take that bag off try and fight this little connector, look in there and see what happened and try and figure out what was going on there. And 
peel off this surface flow. And you can see a lot of resin taken by this. When we weigh it out, it comes to about 90 grams per square foot, which is not unreasonable given similar products. And here you can see the little spots where the air was trapped in the top skin, but the bottom looks nice um, and fully wet out. Um, but you can see just how much resin there is in filling each of those core gaps. So the weight of the panels, this one is 488 grams, uh, one pound, one and a quarter ounces for that one square foot, which feels really heavy, especially when you hold the two next to each other, comparing it to sample 43A, the, the wet laid vacuum bagged version. You can see in the weights, 488 versus 353, and looking at them, the air in the gaps versus the resin. And the question I guess is, does this resin get us anything? So I figured I'd try doing a little bit of uh, testing to see if I could get any data that would show a difference in the core shear properties of the infused versus the wet laid, the ones that have resin filling all the curves versus air filling all the curves. So I machined out some not enough coupons from the off cuts and in doing my best quick and dirty ASTM C393 impression, I was able to record the data of various points of deflection pressure and plot them on a chart showing two infused samples and two wet laid samples. The infused samples seemed to hold up longer and take more pressure to deflect. But take this for what it is. This machine was last calibrated in 1998 and I don't know what I'm doing. So here's an alternative. If you didn't want to have curves that were all full of resin, but you still have curvy things, double or triple cut core has much smaller curves and is not quite as conformable, but for many things it is an adequate alternative. So now a quick look at both of these panels trimmed up. This is the infused one, the one we just made in this video. It's very dense and um, you can definitely feel how much harder and stiffer it feels than this next one, 43A, the vacuum bagged wet laid one with no resin in the curves. This one feels way lighter and can feel it's much more hollow sounding. And between the two of them. You could definitely hear a difference. So here's another look at the laminate schedule. You can see even though I predicted it would take a lot of resin, it actually used even more. And that is a look at those materials, those processes, and how much resin you can fit into Contour Scream Core if you really try. Thanks for checking it out.